technological advancement, it's happening at such a phenomenal rate that we can all not imagine, we, we all of us cannot imagine. Many of us are very concerned with um, how robots and AI is going to take away jobs from us. Many of us among here are going to be unemployed, uh, lost our jobs, not knowing, no, not knowing how and why, and not knowing uh, what to do later. And how automation is actually creating displacement in your own society, in your own industry today. Sooner than we think, and at such a pace, we all cannot imagine. The US actually predicted that 13 million jobs will be made redundant this year, while only 3 million will be created. McKinsey also reported that between 400 million to 800 million jobs will be displaced by the year 2030. Singapore is also not spared because the Singapore government have also said that they predicted that 25% of the jobs in Singapore will be displaced by the year 2030. I would like to share with you a real experience that um, I witnessed in a company that uh, I'm associated with. We used to have 10 people to complete a value chain in the department. The day we to automate the entire operation, and I'm not talking about machines in uh, manufacturing, I'm talking about value chain to run a particular process, uh, a particular business process. Nine people were being made redundant overnight, and we only keep one person to run the entire department. This is real, it sounds really scary to the talent, but it, it is something easy for a company to make such a decision because our human resource cost has just gone down overnight and our profit margin went up. I am sure all this is not new to all of you. It's just simple mathematics that, um, that we can all relate to. Allow me to share with you um, the industrial revolution that we are talking about today. The first industrial revolution is actually mechanization of steam and power, using steam and power to run industries. The second industrial revolution, they use electric power to create mass production. The 3.0 of the, the industrial revolution talks a lot about automation, using computers, electronics, digitization of things. And the fourth industrial revolution is something that we are talking about today, and that represents a combination of cyber, physical systems, the IoT, and also the IOS. And technological advancement in the fourth industrial revolution is about some fundamental shift, not only in jobs, in business, in consumer behavior, and what we as people human race expect of things. We want everything fast, cheap, immediately, I want it now. And we call ourselves the Maggie Me generation. Of course, production lines are transforming. We are talking a lot about cities, smart manufacturing, and even employment and occupation workforce requirements are all changing, and all these are leading to some fundamental shift that we have never imagined before. I would now like to talk about the three do you remember the nine people who have been made redundant in my company? What will they do? These nine people will definitely have at least another 25 to 30 years worth of economic life where they can be adding value to the society, bringing food, uh, putting food on the table at home. So all these nine people, for example, they will then now need to reposition themselves. But reposition to do what? reposition to use their core skills, which we call it core competencies, together with their existing work experience that they have already accumulated over the years of working. And to be, then what they can do is that they will then need to retrain themselves, reskill, and then quickly re-enter back to the job market. And the fourth industrial revolution is, of course, also we talk about shifting of job skill sets requirement to accomplish all this change. New businesses, new technology, especially those which we always coin as disruptive. One out of four graduate, fresh graduates couldn't find a job in 2016. 
what does all this mean again? We are seeing that, um, what we are saying is that as scary as it may seem, the reality is that it is just not as simple for companies to hire the right people as well. While fresh graduates uh, may, see, may, may look, un, uh, may, may look uh, unemployable, but it is also just as hard for companies to find the right talent today. Companies who refuse to transform themselves, companies who feel that it is too difficult to change, eventually they will be losing out to the talent magnets because all the young people, all the bright young talents would want to work for a cool company. I would like to now talk a little bit about how employers, companies today actually hire. The traditional way of hire is that go through the CVs, look at three pages, call you in for an interview, and then decide whether they like your face, how you look, how you smell, and then they say, okay, you get a job, or bye, I'll call you another day. So this is how traditional businesses, and in fact, more than 80% of us here, hire in the past. But remember, we talk about the nine people who need to be repositioned after some retraining, and then they need to re-enter the market. And that would mean that companies today would actually need to look at cross-skilling strategy, looking at the hidden talent pool that never existed before. For example, and um, can I have a show of hands, how many of you are employers over here? How many of you are hiring managers? You decide whether you want to, who you want to recruit, okay? So let me run a small test with you. Do you agree that most of us will always look for people with relevant work experience to fill the position? Yes? Let me ask you this. If AI is new, robotics is new, cybersecurity is relatively new as well, quantum computing is new, where are we going to find people with relevant ex work experience? How are we supposed to expect a 50-year-old editor in the newspaper or a senior journalist who's good at interviewing people, writing, suddenly be able to do the job of a data journalism because that is what's needed today in the media industry? How are we supposed to expect a 35-year-old or 40-year-old IT manager who have graduated over the last 20 years suddenly know how to hack and be a cybersecurity expert? How is that possible? So what does that mean for companies who need to hire but can never find the right talent because those talent that the company want them in a square box just doesn't exist because there's no not many people with relevant experience because most of the new job creation under the fourth industrial revolution actually, and are actually in the new domain where talent pool are already very limited. And then that gives us, then, and that's how we actually pass on the responsibility and the challenge to companies to wanting to give people a chance to take on people who are willing to reposition themselves that need to re-enter the market, but of course the, requisite, the prerequisite is that the person will have certain um, core competencies that the company needs, and um, the company will then be able to give them opportunity to reskill, teach them something new on the job, and then they will be able to perform in no time. I would now like to talk about the job seeker. For the job seeker, for women, for example, if you have taken a few years off to have a baby, have a child, to care for the family, and when you decide to come back to the workforce, it is never easy, right? What about for the rest of us who decided to take a few years out of work to become an entrepreneur, and after a few years, we decided to return to the job market? What would that tell your CV? You will then have a gap in your CV. And we all know that having a gap in the CV is not always the best thing because people would think that you are sitting at home bumming around not doing anything and nobody likes that. So why, what would company do and how should job seeker actually um, empower and enrich their life when they have a gap in their CV? And assuming that during those years out of job, and even if you departed from your main domain and move on to a second area, a new territory to do something that you want to try out to do, but if you want to return back to the formal job sector, you may then need to look at opportunities for you to reposition yourself. And then for 
not only when you have a gap in the CV, and if you do not transform and learn something new, you also have a gap in your CV, which is also a big taboo in the job market. So then this goes back to the need and the requirement for job seeker, who is, who is a talent, to always learn new skills. I would now like to talk about the six most important skill sets that most employers want today. Besides the core competencies that we talk a lot about to fill the job position, the six most skill sets valued by the employers today would be values, whether this person is trustworthy, whether he's ethical, IQ, which we always, talk, um, we always refer to financial analysis and what you can do technically, regulations, whether this person can comply to regulation and rule, or rule of law, whether this person has very high EQ, good relationship, good with people, cross-cultural skills, whether you speak another language, you understand culture, and of course, one of the most important that all employers are looking for would be agility and adaptability of a personality. It looks familiar. Jack Ma says that only by changing education can our children compete with machines. And do how many of you would agree that all the most of the knowledge that we learn in the first year of university will suddenly become obsolete by the time we get to the third year? And how many of you would agree with me if we say that working knowledge is so different from what we learn from the textbook? So then why do we learn? If we don't know, we Google. We ask Professor Google everything that we do not know. So I would like to share with you what we are doing in Malaysia. Back home, we are transforming higher education because we see that it is so urgent for us to reform education to up and to help companies upgrade the workforce at the workplace. We are encouraging businesses to upskill the people so that we will be able to coexist with new machines that we are building, new inventions and new technologies that are actually coming up every two months. And I would like to talk about what we are doing in the 4.0 education policy in Malaysia today. So what we are doing is that we are humanizing higher education because we believe that there should be more collaboration than competition in higher education. Only when we share resources, when we build more alliances with um, different universities, even across the world, we will then be able to move away from own campus, own student model, to a resource sharing, a community-based university and learning, learning institution. So I would now like to think and ask ourselves, who are we serving when we talk about education? Are we serving the jobs of the future so that graduates like us or talent like us will be able to fit into the job market? Or are we fighting to, to be the most to, to, to be the university that can produce the most employable graduates. So what is education actually for? I believe that for whatever said, we must never overlook, overlook the values of making us human. Allow me to share this um, quote with you. If you have watched this video on social media, Alibaba um, founder Jack Ma have said, if you want to be successful, you need to have high IQ and high EQ. But if you want to be respected and if you want to survive in the next 30 years, you need to have LQ, and that is the Q of love. To me, I feel that the Q of love is uh, and actually uh, encompasses care, compassion, empathy, um, appreciation, and gratitude. And this is what human is all about. So for all that was said about whether the fourth industrial revolution is so scary, it is taking away jobs, it is changing nature of jobs, changing our businesses, changing actually the way of life of human. I think for whatever said, people should still come first. Thank you.